Okay. Everything's initialized, programmed, etc. and so on. Departure and arrival. We've selected all these things. We got our legs. The root page itself contained the first page is always the the big picture, if you will. These next pages show how we're going to get to here. In this case, direct. Most direct, most fuel efficient way. And we've done direct basically for all of these except for the last one, in which case we're going to go from CF35L via the approach to 35 left threshold. Um, this is where, if you're going to use Victor Airways, you would enter a Victor Airway here. That's what that's for. So, we got that. We've got our thrust references, thrust limits. We're using takeoff 1 and climb, or t uh, takeoff default and climb default progress page shows where we are. Just a quick check. We're going to have 61,000 pounds of fuel when we get to Malpensa. That's plenty. And two top of climb. This is telling us that since it thinks we're in takeoff mode, the next computed point we're going to hit is a top of climb in 78 nautical miles, 1211 Zulu. That tells us how long it's going to take before we should level off at our flight altitude of 37,000 feet. So, we can get rid of this and now get ready for takeoff. First thing we have to do, of course, is start the engines. So, we enable the fuel. This does not turn the fuel on. All that does is get the fuel ready to come on. And the way we do, we have bleed air from the APU going to the engines. Now, you'll notice that the bleed valves are off, but on means enabled. So, what's going to happen now is when I turn on the starter motor, it's going to enable bleed air to the engine, and engine one is beginning to accelerate. The startup is essentially automatic. Once it reaches a certain speed, it will turn on the fuel and the ignition, and we will have light off. There's light off. As you can see, number one just fired up. Once everything is stabilized, the start button will pop back in. Once the engine spools up and the interstage pressure is stabilized, the engine bleed valve will again reopen, indicating that that engine is now supplying the bleed air bus with air. And there it goes. We had automatically the hydraulic pumps kicked on, the generator kicked on, and the APU generators turned off at least for the uh, the left bus is off. And now we start the rest of them. Okay, all the engines are running and all the engines are connected to the bleed air system. So now we have four very large air compressors that supply more than enough compressed air to run our aircraft systems. So we can isolate the APU supply. The power is automatically disconnected so that the APU generators don't fight the engine generators. And we can shut off the APU. We can now turn our recirculation fans on. Uh, make sure everybody's comfortable. All the fuel pumps are running. All the hydraulics are online. All four engine generators are online. The APU is off. Starters are disengaged. Auto start is on. Con is continuous ignition. We won't need that. That's if you're going into a storm. Fuel, we won't need any anti-ace today because it's such a nice day. And we can go ahead and turn on our aircraft lights. So, as far as the engines are concerned, we're ready to go. We told that we're going to do a flaps 20 departure. So we'll get the flaps going. And I should have done that a little earlier, actually, because it takes a while for the flaps to drop on this thing. While that's happening, 10,000 feet is the maximum it's going to climb to. The, the autopilot doesn't necessarily do anything it wants with respect to altitude. You've actually got to allow it to. So I'm going to tell it remember our initial altitude is 6,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to 6. Like that. Oops. Like that. And we have an initial airspeed limit of 230. So just to remind myself of, oh, excuse me, uh, 210 actually, isn't it? Looking at my chart here on paper real quick, 220. So I'll set that in there to remind me that we have an airspeed restriction of 220 at this point. Now, turn on the flight director. 
What the flight director does is it's a recommendation for how to fly the aircraft. In other words, it would it's sort of a what I would do if I were you from the autopilot. Actually, uh, you can see what it's doing is telling us to rotate. If that's the next thing that's going to happen. Um, when we're flying the aircraft, if we have to turn or climb or descend, this little chevron here is going to move around. And what we need to do is fly the aircraft in a way such that this triangle, which represents the aircraft, kind of just nestles up right into that thing. If we're doing that, what's essentially happening is we are flying the aircraft the way the autopilot would. And if we put the autopilot in command, it's going to do what it would do. In other words, it's going to hold the aircraft up in this little chevron. So we can actually hand fly it, but we can hand fly it with the assistance of the autopilot. So we want that on. Actually, that has to be on. Next thing we do is we arm the auto throttle. Now, that's not going to do anything. This little screw here is the takeoff go around button. This is what we hit to put it in takeoff mode. Uh, normally, this is a button that's near the throttles, but they've, they've activated this little region of the MCP to make it more convenient for us to use in the simulator. So we've got 220 primed, auto throttle prime. You'll notice that the um, two modes for uh, uh, the MCP and the autopilot are in takeoff go around. In this case, it's going to be takeoff. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to prime VNAV. And what that means is, after the takeoff, when I put the autopilot into command mode, it's going to go into VNAV mode, which means it's going to establish the climb and honor these restricted altitudes here. The reason that I'm not going to prime LNAV is because when I turn the autopilot onto command mode, I'm not necessarily going to want to start this turn right away. I'll start the turn manually, if it, as it were, by putting it in LNAV mode once we're going. Okay, flaps are down. We'll do a quick aircraft look here. Have a quick look around. We've got slats down, we've got four engines running, we've got lights going, and we got flaps at 20 degrees. So, that is about it. Next step is to advance the throttles. Okay, we're about ready to go. A couple more things before we do the throttles is we need to turn on the transponder as we're about to start flying. We also want to arm the auto brakes and reject the takeoff. What that does is if we cut the throttles after we advance them, it's going to slam on the brakes. Same thing with the spoilers. Arm the spoilers. Auto brake, auto brakes RTO, confirming that. Transponder on. That should be about it. Here we go. Advancing the throttle. I've still got the brakes on, mind you. All four coming up nicely. Release the brakes. I guess I pulled the lever a little too far. And take off. The computer is now advancing the throttles for me. It's not going to go firewall necessarily. It is going to go to take off power mode. Remember 103. 80 knots. We want to check to make sure all the thrust is being developed properly. We're up. Notice that we fly in our chevron here. We have positive climb. Gear coming up. Command. You'll notice it's gone to VNAV speed. What VNAV speed means is that it's going to fly this airspeed using the bug. It's recommending that I start to bring some flaps up. You notice when I went to 5, it goes to climb power. That's where we told it. When, when we hit 5, go to climb. So we have our power reduction. It's now time to start our turn. Actually, it's a little, a little bit past time to start our turn. We go to VNAV, and now it's going to try to acquire the flight path. get a beautiful view of downtown Amsterdam, the Dam Square. This is Old Town Amsterdam with all the canals surrounding it. And I can 
tell you from personal experience that is exactly what it looks like. 